You've heard a lot of body language experts say you match and mirror people. Yes. Right, to build rapport, to make it about them, to build a connection. You can also match and mirror their vocal foundations. You match and you mirror where they are with their voice too. And then people immediately feel mm. like, oh, you're approachable. When someone comes to me with a peak emotion, even if it's frustration, I will mirror that for them to show them that, hey, I, I feel you. It's like, oh man, that sucks. Right? So it's not just in the words that I use, I deliver it in a way so they can hear that I'm with you and I'm on the same page. You've heard a lot of body language experts say you match and mirror people. Yes. Right? To build rapport, to make it about them, to build a connection. You, you, you match and mirror their body language. But what a lot of people don't realize is you can also match and mirror their vocal foundations. So when you think about the voice and you divide it into five different categories and you think it from the the perspective of rate of speech, volume, pitch and melody, tonality, and the pause. Now, all of a sudden, you have these five factors that you can start to think about when you're talking to people. So if someone comes up to you and they're naturally speaking a little bit quickly because they're nervous, right, like that, and they're speaking a little bit lower volume and the melody is not as great of a range, and, and you notice these things, then you match and you mirror where they are with their voice too. And then people immediately feel mm. like, oh, you're approachable. Yes. And it's not that we stay there because some people go, oh, but that's that's inauthentic. That, that, that's not right. No, no, that, that's you being a great and dynamic communicator. Mm. That's you going, hey, I'm going to meet you where you are to make you feel comfortable, to build connection, to make it about you. Meet them where they are and then slowly you take them back out. So if you're meeting them where they are, you go, oh, hey, thank you for coming up and saying hello. But hey, can I, can I just ask you quickly too, what did you really take away? What was the key thing you took away? Oh, you took that away. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, I'm so happy that you came up and, and had a chat with me. All of a sudden now, once you're in rapport, you can take them to where you want to go. Mm. And that's something you can take onto a Zoom call. You meet them where they are, right? If someone's really excited about an idea they want to bring to you, you can meet them there with that excitement to show them respect, right? As opposed to a lot of the times previously in my life, someone will come to me really excited and I have one gear, Jay, and I'm, I'm just one gear. I'm like, oh, that sounds really cool. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> awesome, man. And I didn't realize that then all of a sudden I made them feel less important. Whereas now all of a sudden I've learned that, ah, when someone comes to me with a peak emotion, even if it's frustration, I will mirror that for them to show them that, hey, I feel you. It's like, ah, oh, man, that sucks. Right? So it's not just in the words that I use. I deliver it in a way so they can hear that I'm with you and I'm on the same page. Yes. So one of the fastest ways to build rapport with people. Yeah. I think that's so important because you could start up a Zoom call and someone turns up and they're in a really sad, low mood. Yeah. And in your head, you think, come on, uh, like, come on, <laughs> bring more it. energy, right? And it, yeah. And then you get frustrated. Yeah. And now you feel you're dragging them up a hill. Whereas if you were like, hey, I just want to check in with you. Like, you're right. I, yeah, how's it going? You lower your volume too. Yeah. You meet them where they are. You're like, hey, you know, I noticed on the other call, you weren't, are you okay? And all of a sudden, people are way more likely to open up if you used your instrument in that way, as opposed to, Oh, mate, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> what's going on, man? Come on. It, look, look at the weather outside. It's amazing today. What's going on? They're definitely not opening up to that person. <laughs> but I didn't have that sensitivity growing up. No sensitivity. Mirroring is a communication technique that involves adapting certain aspects of your own behavior to those of your conversation partner. In the case of body language, it means naturally and subtly reflecting the other person's posture, gestures, or expressions creating an unconscious sense of harmony that fosters trust and a perception of affinity. It's as if you were implicitly saying, we're on the same wavelength. Mirroring isn't limited to body language. It can also be applied to someone's tone of voice, rhythm, and choice of words. This is known as vocal mirroring. This practice, which activates the brain's mirror neurons, can occur naturally, but can also be trained. Mirror neurons fire both when we perform an action and when we observe someone else performing it. This mechanism allows us to unconsciously mirror the behaviors of others, promoting empathy and understanding. Applied to communication, mirroring leverages this natural predisposition. When we reflect someone's body or voice, we stimulate a feeling of familiarity and connection, making it easier to build trust and interpersonal bonds. This also connects to the principles of communication accommodation theory, which suggests that adapting your communicative style to match another person's register helps foster trust and social closeness. It's not about mechanical imitation, but rather an intentional and dynamic act that conveys empathy and recognition. What clearly emerges is that the voice becomes an emotional bridge. The ability to reflect someone else's emotional state, even vocally, is not a sign of inauthenticity, but of communicative intelligence. It's the skill of meeting the other person where they are and then guiding them toward a new direction, 
facilitating dialogue, collaboration, and positive influence. The voice is not just a means of transmitting words, but a strategic tool for building authentic relationships, creating trust, and strengthening one's authority.